During the next 20 minutes, I'm going to show you how to grade on Gradescope, both using our basic grading interface and using our AI-assisted grading tool, how to publish grades to students online, what Gradescope looks like from the student perspective, and some of the statistics features that we have on Gradescope. So let's start with grading, since that's where the bulk of your time as an instructor will be spent. So I'm gonna go ahead and start grading question one on this demo exam. So what I'm seeing here on the left is one student's handwritten answer to question one, and on the right, I see the rubric. So the way that this got into Gradescope, uh, if it was a exam or a quiz that students took in class, instructors can scan those in uh, and get them into Gradescope, or students can also submit their own work in the case of a problem set or a homework assignment. And in that case, students can just take photos using their smartphones or upload a PDF. But regardless of how the work gets into Gradescope, the grading interface is the same. So in this case, the student got the correct answer. That is indeed the integral of x. And to check that off, I'm just gonna check the correct rubric item. We see the student got zero points and they got a full score of three out of three for this question. So now I'm gonna go click next. And now I'm seeing a different student's answer to the same question. So the default way to grade on Gradescope is to grade one question at a time. That is, grade all students for question one, then grade all students for question two, et cetera. You always do have access to every other question on the same student's exam. So if I did wanna see the student's answer for question two, I can navigate to that from the menu up here. But most instructors find that grading one question at a time is faster, more consistent, and makes more sense because you can build the rubric as you grade and as you see new types of mistakes. So in this case, the student did make a mistake. They're missing the one half. So I'm gonna add a new rubric item. I'm gonna type a description. And I can change the point value to decide how many points we'll be taking off. So let's say that we deem this to be a minor error and I'm only gonna take off one point. Now I check off this rubric item and we see that the student lost that one point and their score for this question is a two out of three. I'm gonna click next to move to the next student's answer. The student has the correct answer. So I can either check off my existing correct rubric item or I can grade even faster with keyboard shortcuts. So I can just press the one key on my keyboard to select that rubric item. And I can use any of the numbers on my keyboard to select the corresponding rubric items. There's also a bunch of other keyboard shortcuts that you can read about in our, in our help center. And I'm gonna press the right arrow key on my keyboard to move on to the next student's answer. The student made a new kind of mistake. They're missing the constant. So I'm going to add a rubric item, type a description. Let's say we deem this to be a bigger deal. So we're gonna deduct two points. I'm gonna select the rubric item. And if I want to write directly on the student submission, I can do that using my annotation tools up here. So I have a pen tool that will let me freehand write on the submission. I have a box tool, which I can use to highlight uh, various parts of the submission. And I have a text annotation tool, which I can use to type comments. And I can also extend the arrow to point to a specific part of the submission that the comment applies to. So let's take a look at one more student. The student made two types of mistakes. They're missing the one half. So I'm gonna check off uh, my second rubric item by pressing the number two on my keyboard. And they're missing the constant. So I'm gonna press the three on my keyboard. So now we see that the student got a zero out of three. Let's say we've been grading many students and we see that a lot of them are answering X squared. And we decide that we do want to award these students partial credit. So what you can do on Gradescope is you can decide that missing a constant is only gonna be worth one point off. We can change the point value of this rubric item. And now we see that this student got the point back, but also every other student who has missed the constant also just got that point back. So this rubric is shared among all students. And so you can change the way that certain mistakes are graded and scored as you go. And those changes will apply automatically retroactively to already graded students. So before we jump to AI-assisted grading, I wanted to show you a couple more useful features on the grading page. 
If you're grading with TAs or multiple graders, multiple people can be grading the same question at the same time, and no two people will ever look at the same submission at the same time, as long as everyone's using this next ungraded button. This uh, field down here is specific only to the student that you're grading. So while the rubric is shared among all students, if I want to type a comment or make a point adjustment just for this one student, I can do that down here. So I can type something like, see me in office hours, review chapter two, whatever you want to tell the student. And then you can reuse these comments. So if I also want the student to see me in office hours, I can type in, select that comment down here so I don't have to retype it. And if I ever want to check uh, which students have applied a certain rubric item to, I can hover over it and click on the magnifying glass. And that's gonna show me all of the students who had that rubric item applied. So I can click on their names and double check that all the grading has been consistent. So that's the basic grading interface. Uh, now you can, right now with this basic grading interface, as you could see, we graded each submission one at a time. So we were still looking at every single student's answer. With our AI assisted grading and manual answer grouping features, we can actually grade even faster by grouping all the similar answers together and grading each group at once. So I want to show you that next. And the AI assisted grading and manual answer grouping features are part of our Gradescope Complete product. And if you'd like to try them out, or if you'd like to know whether your university already has an institutional agreement that gives you access to these features, please just email us at help at gradescope.com. And we're happy to give you a trial or answer any questions you may have about Gradescope Complete or pricing. So I'm gonna now grade the same integral question that I was just grading. But now, instead of grading each answer individually, I'm going to form answer groups first. Gradescope can automatically form answer groups for multiple choice questions, questions where students write a math response in a fixed box or in a fixed line, and questions where students write text in a box or on a line. So in this case, this is a math question, so I'm gonna select the math question type. And what Gradescope's gonna do now is it's gonna look at all of my students' answers and it's gonna form groups of similar answers. So this is a group for all the students who answered X squared, all the students who answered X squared plus C, the students who answered one half X squared, the students who didn't know the correct answer, and the students who actually got the question correct. So I can quickly review to make sure that the AI uh, correctly identified the answers in each group. So these look good. These are all X squared plus C. Just gonna go ahead and quickly review all of my groups. And any answers that the AI wasn't sure about are gonna be left for you to group manually at the end. So in this case, I can just drag over this one half X squared plus C to the appropriate group, drag this guy over to the blank group, and drag this one over to the one half X squared group. All right, all my answers have been grouped. And so now when I go to grade, I'm gonna see a very similar grading interface to what we were just looking at before with the basic grading interface, but now I'm grading four submissions at once. So I'm grading all the students who answered X squared plus C. So again, I can create that rubric item to describe the mistake of missing the one half. I can decide to deduct one point. I can check it off. But now when I go to the next answer, I'll see that I just graded four out of my 19 students. So this can be very useful for grading a lot of students at once, especially for questions where there are only a few correct answers or only a few answer, answer possibilities. And for any other type of question that's not multiple choice, fill in the blank math or fill in the blank text, you can still use the answer grouping features, but you can group the answers manually. So in this case, I have a simple geography question where students were asked to shade in South Dakota. So I can select manual grouping as my question type. And so I'm gonna see all of my students' answers as thumbnails on the left. And I can quickly go through and form the groups of, correct, of similar answers myself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of the students who correctly shaded South Dakota. This can be very useful for chemistry diagrams, Lewis structures, charts, graphs, tables, things like that, where you can very easily, quickly 
uh, see all the similar answers and group them together. So I'm going to create a group, give it a name, and now I can see that I'm going to be grading all nine students who correctly shaded South Dakota uh, all at once. And I can form more groups or I can just grade the rest of my answers individually. Even for more complex questions, a lot of instructors find it helpful to group all the correct answers first and then grade everything else one by one. So that way you can spend more time grading the answers that need uh, more effort and not spend time clicking and reusing feedback for the correct answers. So that's basically grading on Gradescope. So regardless of how you're grading, whether you're grading some questions individually, some with grouping, or just using grouping or individual grading for all of them, once you're done grading, you can publish grades to students. So on the Review Grades page, you'll see all of your students' names, you'll see their scores, you'll have an option to download grades. So if you'd like to get the grades into your learning management system, like Canvas, Blackboard, uh, Brightspace, you can download grades and get a spreadsheet that you can then upload into your learning management system. Uh, if we do have an institutional license with your school, this can be done automatically. But for everyone else, you would need to manually download the spreadsheet, upload it into the LMS. And then you can publish the grades to students so that they can view their grades and submissions online. So when I click Publish Grades, I get an option to notify my students over email. So I'm going to compose email to students. Here I can edit the subject line, edit the body. By default, students see some basic statistics. I can delete or add anything I want here. And if students have never logged into Gradescope before, they'll get a link, an emailed link to set a password. And if they have, they'll just get an emailed link to access the assignment. So once I send this out to all of my students, on the student side, I can log in. So I'm gonna show you what the student interface looks like. All right. So when I log in as a student, I'm gonna see my exam. I'm gonna see my score. I can click on it. I'll see my original submission that the instructor scanned in on the left or that I scanned in if it was a student uploaded assignment. And on the right, I'll see the rubric. I'll see my score for each question. I can click on the question to see the full rubric and any rubric items that were applied to me will be highlighted. Uh, as an instructor, if you only want students to see the rubric items that were applied to them, you have an option to do that on the settings page. But by default, students do see the full rubric for the full context of why they got the points off. So as a student, I can go through, look at my score, zoom in on my submission. If I disagree with the scoring by default, I can request a regrade. So this will let me type a justification to the instructor and instructors will be able to review regrade requests and reply to the students. As an instructor, if you don't want to deal with regrade requests, you can disable those uh, on your regrade request page, or you can set a time window during which students can submit them. But by default, uh, students do have the option to submit as many regrades as they want for as many questions as they want. So on the instructor side, You have a regrade request page, and you'll see all incoming regrade requests here. You can review them. So I can see that the student said, I think I deserve more points. And you can look at their submission. If they do, you can change the rubric or give them a point adjustment. And regardless, you can reply to the regrade requests, and the student's going to get an email with that reply. So finally, the last thing I want to show you is one feature that a lot of instructors find useful on Gradescope, and that's our assignment statistics page. So what we're looking at here is the statistics page for a real computer science midterm at UC Berkeley that the instructor kindly let us use. So I can immediately see the mean score for each question on this exam. I can see that students didn't do that well on question 3.6. And as an instructor, I might then ask, is that because that question was towards the end of the exam and students ran out of time, or is it because they were actually struggling with the concept of question 3.6? And I can get that kind of insight by looking at the rubric item level analysis. So these were all the rubric items for question 3.6, and I can see that only 19% of my students left that question blank. So perhaps it was actually that they were struggling with the concept and not that the question was towards the end of the exam. 
And one other thing I can do with statistics is I can tag my questions with course objectives or concepts. So it looks like questions 2.1 and 2.2 on this exam were testing students' abilities to draw environment diagrams. And I can look at a tag level analysis of how students did on these various concepts. So looking at this, it looks like students did mostly know how to draw environment diagrams, but maybe they struggled with recursion. So perhaps that's a topic I might want to review more during my next lecture. And that's basically it. Those are the primary features of Gradescope. If you'd like to see anything else, or if you have any questions as you're trying things out, uh, please reach out to us at help at gradescope.com. And we'd love to hear from you, hear any feedback you may have, and answer any questions you may have. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch this demo. Have a great day.